Music of the Vanilla Show. Up close and personal. Good afternoon, everybody. It's the <laughs> Games here. Welcome to uh, the Goblin Vanilla Show, up close and personal uh, chat show where we invite our guests to come on and talk about their lives and their career, and maybe one or two up and close personal questions. I'm Tony Go, And I'm Deborah Fenella. I'm waiting very patiently behind the screen is the lovely, multi-talented Claire Howison. Now, she's not only just a comedian, but she's an amazing one, but also an actress and a TV presenter. So all the way across to Essex, and we're actually here live in, in form of in Dorset. Good afternoon, Claire. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Yes. Oh, you're welcome. Sorry, it's a bit delayed. We had a few technical Sorry. problems didn't we, with Zoom this afternoon. Yeah, I was saying, we had our microphone <laughs> set up and we were getting all kinds of feedback and even they weren't plugged in. We were getting feedback from somewhere, so we had a few problems there. But, uh, <laughs> not like uh, oh. Steph says, but we've got through it now. We did. Yeah. Yeah, we're all really here. going into the full moon, aren't we? That's the problem. So it's full moon tomorrow. Also yes. It, it is, yes, yes, full moon. Um, and it was affecting, yeah. thing, you know, electrical, unfortunately. Now, yeah. then, yeah, I'd like to talk about your amazing <laughs> career path. Um, you are a multi talented yeah. lady, and Aww. you also started out as a presenter yourself, didn't you? I believe. Like, as a, what? Sorry. Myself, as a presenter, yes, yourself, sorry, I like, believe. Like, interviewed some it's... many celebrities, including Frank Bruno. So, please yeah. tell them, our viewers a little bit about how you embarked on that path to start off with in presenting, please. Yeah, well, it's, it was really weird. You know the secret? Yes. <laughs> the law of attraction. Yes. I was living in Newquay. I'd been to India and America, and I was a yoga teacher, and that's what I studied out there. So I was, like, doing all my healing as well in, in Newquay. And I got really ill, and I was like, is this transference, you know, or is this my karma? Sorry, this is probably another show like a spiritual show if we want to I'm very spiritual that. as well so I fully understand yeah I know you are stuff. I know <laughs> and I was like I liked it when you asked me on this I was like, oh, at least I know she's she knows kind of like where I'm coming from yes there's no, lots I of us yeah there's lots of us um and like my Reiki master gave me the secret is 2006 and I stood on the balcony we had a lovely flat me and my friend were renting it when I was teaching yoga and I looked over Crantock Beach and I just went oh can I have this because I always felt like you were born and then you just cope with whatever life throws at you and I'm not really working class you know luckily I got like nice a family you know like my mum and dad are nice people but I was like oh can you really have this you know can, can you can you have more so I asked for it and then I oh it was so it's just really weird how things happen sometimes it's not always amazing and sometimes things like my thyroid broke down I was really really ill like really ill yeah and my mum went you've got to come back to Essex and I was like no, I don't really want to I've got a nice life you know I mean you know you live in uh, the west country it's stunning I didn't want to move and I was like you know I, I got so ill I had to and that she had to care for me oh. and uh, I had radiation on it this was cool oh, about 14 years ago and I remember just like laying in her house thinking well what do I do now I don't know like I'm, I'm in like the little box room I in her house I don't know what to do with my life you know I don't really want to go back to teaching yoga even though people you know really benefit from it and it's like really good karma points but I sort of feel like something shifted in me and sometimes you have to suffer it's like yeah. <laughs> <Here we are. laughs> yeah so when you're a Reiki master Oh, yeah. I think all my karma <laughs> just come up like bang at me. And I was like, whoa, how do I cope with this, you know? And uh, then I just thought, well, I, I was still quite ill while I was doing it. And I look back at my first presenter uh, show reel back in 2008, and I was like really skinny, you know, and, and I'm not a skinny person. <laughs> I right? just naturally, I'm quite a, a rounded you know well-rounded woman <laughs> you know and and I was like wow I look awful but um I studied at the TV training academy and that was brilliant so yeah, you just words. sorry to talk was that a uh, fun word 
Yeah. And yeah, I did yeah. as well. Advanced TV training. With Brian, Brian. Yeah, I love Brian. <laughs> I did mine oh, in um, 2018. Wow. Well, 17 yeah. or 18, he's around about that time. He's really good. He never he's I really good, yes. <laughs> he but watches me my... all the time because he's my friend he's... on Facebook. That's what he's been watching. Oh, <laughs> he's really, really good. Yeah. Really good. And uh, so I got that reel. And then I got onto Spotlight. I don't know how I did it. Spotlight's well quite hard to get onto it is. as a presenter. Yes. And I didn't really get anything. <laughs> and then it's sort of like you've got to bang on doors yourself, haven't you? Yes, I think you you've got to create create opportunities. So I, it was, it was, everything was just coming at me. It's really weird, like with the law of attraction. And this local company said, oh, we want a presenter for Harlow TV. And it's like, okay. it's only Harlow. Yeah, but like they were, I mean, like they've worked on EastEnders and, you know, they're like actors. And one of the guys was in a film called Outlaw. He like played quite a role in there with Danny Dyer years ago. But they were all cameramen. Yeah. So they were teaching me, like, saying, yeah. And like, about, oh. You know, the hand movements as well, wasn't it? We were, like, talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, don't do this, don't say yes. that. I was like, okay. We're sitting still, we're not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, the first one, um, the first job we had was Sandra Dickinson. Really? Like, the actress. She okay. was so lovely. Yeah, at Harlow Playhouse. I interviewed Derek Okora. I love. Oh, he's him. my friend. He's oh, so lovely. He's so sad when he passed over. Yeah, it? I was really so sad. sad. I was. Oh, and then I did my acting. I went into acting later in life because when I was a kid, I was good at it, and I just followed a spiritual path. I was like, I don't want any of that. I I don't want fame. I, I just want to be, you know, like spiritual and explore yes. the world and travel. So. Yeah, once I think the secret just changed everything. I was like, be careful what you wish for. It's so it true. Can happen. Yeah, and also when you do like the vision boards as well. I mean, I get a lot of my clients. Yeah. I do a lot of life coaching and teaching mm. with clients. And I always get them to do a vision board. And like I said, and be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. So yeah. it's that positive mental attitude, isn't it? You know, and actually yeah. positive, everybody received it and how grateful and gratitude you do actually draw it in to your reality and into your life, don't you? So wonderful. Yeah. Path. I, I wouldn't change the spiritual path I've been on it for many 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 years and I've always been you know a very spiritual person so it's really exciting so um after you done that you went into a little bit of acting didn't you like you mm. said so tell us a little bit about that obviously being a budding actor myself I've yet to get Mr Go on um film set <laughs> well actually he's going to be in my music video tomorrow um because i'm in the recording studios tomorrow to record freedom for us all and also my song with mark bustle both of the songs are he's composed the music is amazing but be kind be kind be kind which is for the john lennon songwriting competition and we are actually doing a music video for freedom for us all so Tony and Tom are cameraman you can't see him he's actually going to be in it as well as some of my friends as well so he's actually going to be in a music video first time excellent yeah. bit of acting oh. old and old banner freedom for us all oh. <laughs> he's, he's trying to do harmonics as well do, do yeah. some harmonic stuff I do so. like the random moments so, yeah okay. we, we have a we do have a we giggle, have a we, have a giggle. We, we do we do some harmonies sometimes but there you go <laughs> The, exactly. Let's talk about your acting now. Um, your oh, comedian, sorry. comedy. No, hang on, Come. acting first. I was, acting first. I was going to ask. Start dressing. No, no. no. <laughs> okay. We're talking about acting, and then obviously you're going on about so much. I got, I got this crack. <laughs> so where were we? <laughs> where were we? We're sorry, Essex, yeah. Essex, Newquay, back to Essex. Still at Essex, are we now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's near Essex. London. And then you did yoga. Now you're going on um, to the acting. Right, right, right. Now, yeah. We're acting still, yeah. Carry on, please. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask you: Is that your trance? Because I heard your trance tune, and I loved it. Oh, I, have you heard I Armstrong? It. I do belong. That's a yeah. Is that the way. video? Um, no, this is a, a different one actually, because I'm due to release release into the charts on the 9th of August. Um, Funky Noobs, Dance of the Beat with Agent Square Wave, and it goes into the UK and the USA music charts and digital music Hello. platforms by K Dragon Records. So that was a really good fun. Um, but this, no, this is a, all about the planetary changes and God's plan for the earth. 
Um, it's a very spiritual song, a conscious music song, like we do a lot of work with Scarlet Jet. And it's all about positive change for the world and all about God's plan as well. So it's, I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm meditating. Yeah, I love that. I was meditating. Really wow. exciting. So, um, yes. And where can we where can we all see that? Like once the video's been done. Well, what happens is once I've recorded the song, it then goes to K Dragon Records, and then they distribute it. And um, it normally takes about four weeks to release it. Then through distribution into the music charts and digital music platforms. So once we've done it tomorrow, um, I'm sure Gary will be on the case by yeah. um, you know either tomorrow or by Friday. So then it'd be literally four weeks from there but I've got three songs that are due to be released on the 30th it's we are meant to be a movie song um, against domestic violence and to bring more awareness um funky noobs dance to the beat on the 9th and then on the 20th we live in two different worlds song that one goes into the charts and that's all about people obsessed with their phones and forgetting about each other yeah. again it's a huge message to go out across the world for couples where they're just sat on their phones ignoring each other and their families and their friends and it's like wake up world there is a big world out there beyond your phone basically so true that is the world we're living in now, isn't it? It is sad. It really yeah. is. We're forgetting how to communicate in person. So where was your first time on film set, Claire? Oh, like, well, I did. I'd done my training um, at the London Academy of TV and Film. And that's with Millie Ellis. She's just such an amazing teacher. Mm -hmm. And she just kept saying to me, because I'm quite intense. Like, I think that's why I prefer comedy rather yes. than all of it because you can just be you and she was going and I was like playing this part and she was going stop <laughs> doing that like going like that to my eyes because I was like really intense <laughs> like in this moment she's going no stop doing that and so she'd pick up everything so I did that and then got on spotlight as an actress and then I got offered a part in Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy opposite Colin Firth really yeah. oh wow how I never did it I didn't oh, no, do it why? because I had a normal job and oh, I was, bless you. yeah, yeah. And it was quite an important job for the Ministry of Justice, you yeah. know, and I had to work with judges and I wasn't allowed any time off because I get quite oh, ill yeah. every now and then. Like I get, I suffer migraines. I had one this morning. I, I do. Took the wow. Do you? I and it's so. always worse when the weather's bad, I find, yeah. you know, when it's too hot or is it due to be a thunderstorm as well. Yeah. <laughs> And, and the tablets I take make me smile at people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, relaxed, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, like, oh, it's not part of the act. I'm just a bit like, I off these tablets. But there you go. Yeah, it's a horrible thing to live with. So, yeah, I turned a lot of stuff down. Oh, like, okay. yeah, yeah. And another one in the world's end with Nick Frost as well. Um, I turned that down because then I was working on the Olympics. So, like, mm -hmm. as an actor, you have to, like, do work as well, some, like, normal jobs. Yeah. So, comedy is my favourite. And I did a course, you know, but they can't really train you to do it, I always yeah. think. Like, they can say, oh, stand here, the lighting's here, um, look at this person, don't look at that person too long, project your voice, this is how a mic works. But your material is just you, isn't it? It's your authentic self. Um, and that's like Britain's Got Talent. Like when you was talking about the vision board, Simon Cow was on my vision board. He's awesome, board. isn't he? I sang to him in 2016 <laughs> and the team. They are fantastic, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, he was on my vision board. And I was like, wow, now I'm like on a stage looking at Simon. And he was on my vision board like 12 years ago. So now so that's real, my isn't it? Thing. When you're actually on that stage, because I was on it in 2016, it's like, and now I'm here. You yeah, know, and it's almost like you're in a dream, isn't it? And yet they're right, yeah. who are you? <laughs> yeah. It is quite now. surreal. <laughs> it's a dream now. Yeah, no, Maybe no. it is all a dream. Yeah, now we can write a song comedy. about it. Now you can comedy, and you're saying about your material. Now, I'm a, a comedy connoisseur, as you were. I'm a, an apprentice comedian myself. I can see it. You can see that? Um, yeah. Now, your, your type of material, is it a situation or is it your life being at that moment type comedy where you pick parts of your life and make it into comedy or do you take a situation and make it into comedy? 
a bit of both really i talk a lot about my parents because they're just funny they're pensioners oh, and right. it's all the things that these pensioners get up to like yeah. these things the nhs send them through the door and they have to go and do them and like about their dog and yeah i talk about that but i've written that in my sitcom as well because i think it'll be portrayed better on the screen but yeah. again that really hard to get through mm. like channel four were like oh you need to be a registered company and i'm thinking now i've got to set up my own company and film this you know this pilot but yeah mm -hmm. i do i think you've got to throw a few jokes in ain't you like they're about really, relationships yeah. the, the days of stand-up comedian telling jokes is almost over isn't it i mean uh, a friend of mine at the time and also i interviewed him as well many years ago tim vine he, oh, he, makes, he, he makes comedy. I mean, I mean, I worked with him when he first started out back in the early 90s. And uh, he's an all one-liner comedy jokes, aren't they? Clever. And there's an Australian he's... guy, I can't think of his name right now, has done exactly the same thing. Just one-liners, just to get people's laugh. You know? Yeah. It's, good. it's, it's, it's something like air conditioning. Not a fan. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've got that. <laughs> Velcro, what a rip off! Yeah, that's my yeah. favourite. Tim Vine, yeah. he's very, very clever. He's yeah. so unique, like really, really in his own category, isn't he? There's Even not as an actor. Tim Vine. Yeah, when he was in um, Not Going Out, he was in that series. Oh yeah, Lee Max. Yeah, he was in he, the beginning. He worked with Lee Mac um, in Not Going Out. As I say, I'm, I'm a comedy connoisseur. That's all I do. Watch all day long is comedy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you can't beat it. You can't beat a bit of comedy. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, the channel I watch don't pay for repeats. They don't pay royalties on repeats. And uh, they're very poor players anyway. But they always repeat the same program week in, week out. Yes. And it's always a turn. Exactly. So you get to learn. If you didn't get it last time, you learn it this time. And you get to keep it and remember it. Yes. Yeah. See, I like Norman Wisdom. Time? I was sort of brought up with Norman Wisdom and his sort of sense of humour because my mum is an avid fan and she did eventually get to meet him mm. when he actually came to Lighthouse many years ago and introduced him. And it again, that was a, a wish that was granted for my mum. Uh, and he's fantastic, isn't he, Mr Grimsdale? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's really good. <laughs> and he's your um, and obviously yeah. got Kenny Everett, haven't you, as oh, well? And Benny was... Hill. I mean, I was yeah. quite obviously watching those as a child sort of growing up so who was you know your favorite comedian that you maybe sort of aspired to, you know to sort of you know looked up to basically or, or to be like it was french and saunders oh yes so really oh, yeah. french and, saunders. and harry and paul because i started <laughs> oh, you're, you're saying that on this um unidentified channel i'm talking about they're doing a rerun of french and saunders they've got back together over the last year or two and they're going through all comedy clips of women, women comedians. I can't think of what the show's called now. That. That's doing a rerun right now. Yeah, because there's not many women, is there? It's, it's like we're in this like, little subcategory, you know, like even on a bill, a comedy bill, you think, oh, it's like all blokes and one token woman sort of thing. Yeah. I always wonder why, like why women don't really want to, you know? I, I don't know, maybe... It is hard. I must admit it. <laughs> I it's quite a hard in industry to actually be, you know, in. I, I do like it Catherine is. Tate. I think she's hilarious. I, I love all of yeah. the things that she does. And, you know, I've, I've actually got one of her DVDs and it's really good. I mean, what do you think of Catherine Tate? She's fantastic. Oh, she? she's fantastic. When I used to do characters, she inspired me. Like, I was, <laughs> you know, an old lady character. When I first started out, I started as an old lady in a hospital gown. And it was just yeah. a really cheap joke. Like, she, you know, when, when you're in a hospital gown, yeah. you turn around, your ass hangs out. Yeah. You know, like, it's like every time you're in a hospital, you just have to have a chuckle when someone turns yeah. around, you can see their bum cheeks. And so I used to do that and then sell these stupid, really stupid hospital jokes. Like, yeah. And some of them, I, pop, I wouldn't say now, because it was like 10 years ago. So I started off with her, and then I had like this wag character. And then I had this, I oh, probably couldn't do that now either. It's a superhero called Period Woman. And she was just like, but it's real women's humour. And I did yes. it in Edinburgh. But the, some of the men loved it. They were like, that's yeah. hilarious. My wife's like that. You know, so... <laughs> Yeah, it was it was quite mad. I wouldn't do it now, but I was like learning when I first started out with all these characters, and then 
a lot of reviewers just said do stand up like amanda holden just went do stand up like mm. why are you doing impressions sort of thing yes. but as show at the moment at museum of comedy just a bit of a plug yeah, well, <laughs> on the i sound like Stacey Solomon then oh my god <laughs> yeah that's on the uh 18th of august 8 30 on a wednesday night boring night and we're doing impressions in it oh, so yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're mixing it up. So my comedy partner, Sarah Louise Aston, she comes on, she does her 20 minutes. I do my 20 minutes stand up. And then we do the Lorraine Kelly show and she plays Lorraine. Oh, does she? I come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do Cher oh, and yes, Fancy Dooley. <laughs> I was going to say, do you, um, do you do sketches? Yeah, not as much now. I used to have 500 on 500? YouTube. Yeah, wow. and then I mean, yeah, at some of your sketches, you're really good. You you are an uh, comedian. Do you fancy telling us a couple of jokes? Oh, then I'm selling my material. Oh. <laughs> well, if you're a comedian. All right, go and change colour then. <laughs> Actually, I think that there, that we've got the rainbow theme going on, yeah, haven't we? Is. I know. I'm I'm the other way. <laughs> yes, and you're that way. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that, that the old joke. You're a comedian, are you? All right, go on and change colour then. <laughs> chameleon <laughs> as if you're a bit deaf i never heard that one i no. should know because my dad knows all the old jokes like the old ones, yeah. yeah my mum is a bit rude about a bit oh, naughty. About that. Like let's, with... not, let's not talk about comedy now uh yesterday let's not forget the sad loss of tom o'connor Mm. Yesterday, that was really sad when we heard it. He passed yesterday. He passed this morning. Uh, yeah. Oh, he was um, amazing. Yeah. I was at. Um, I, 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 I've done a residency for about thirteen or fourteen years in a famous cabaret club in in Surrey, and uh, we had our thirtieth year celebration at the time, and uh, we're all. It was a black tie job, and uh, my one last memory of Tom O'Connor was standing next to him. In, in the men's room <laughs> at the urinals. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, hello, Tom, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, it's a nice memory to have, isn't it? <laughs> I always wonder if I was a man, like, would I have a little peek? You know, like... <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Yeah. Believe me, you wouldn't. You don't. You don't it's have it's a look. look. Yeah, no, you, you just... Just you, Mr. Go. Just, no, yeah. did you say men's room? <laughs> you know, I did say men's room, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> Should try to keep me politically correct because the, the show that we've got later on this afternoon is a, yeah. a bit of a politically correct show. So I, this is the only time I can be me and I've got to be dead straight next time. Yeah, because it's all gender neutral toilets now, isn't it? It is. Isn't it? it is. <laughs> to get back to the jokes, I mean, like you said earlier, that your dad is very good at telling jokes. So it obviously yeah. definitely runs in the family, doesn't it? My mum's like too. really good. Is she? she loved Joan Rivers. Yeah. And, and like she was off both of your parents with regards to the jokes, or, you know, and then sort of take it in turns, bouncing off each other. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> they know all, all the old <clears throat> ones, you know. But stand up isn't, I mean, like Tim Vine, he went on with like joke after joke. Mm. And I just think that's so good, like a Mr. Mr. Pun Man. But a lot if you look at live at the apollo it's all about story like building up to a story like mickey flanagan yeah you know so yeah like when i used to use characters i had this bloke called um i can't really say it's a bit rude it was mike oxard that was his name and he was like this it's taking the mick out of like all the blokes from the council so i live on the council estate and i just used to walk in i couldn't do it now but because you, it's offensive and I used to walk in and go, oh, and, and I loved being a man. I yeah. loved it. <laughs> and I was just shouting at people and some of the jokes just really actually make me cringe now. It's <laughs> like, oh no, did I really say that? But then you can blame it on the character. Oh, it was yeah. Mike. He was acting. It was Mike. It was him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what acting's all about, isn't it? I mean, I've been in the act, it's sort of TV casting entertainment well since 1977 so it's your age a bit now and actually wow. um so again when you get on that stage or behind that camera you are acting on film set aren't you you know and you're stepping into character and that's why yeah. i love acting because you are stepping into so many different characters aren't you which is good fun even with stand-up yes you know, you are, stand -up. <laughs> it's not you is it it's no, like you've got to go character. out there and 
<laughs> yeah, you got to deal with whoever's there as well. Like I've yeah. had some awful hecklers, like in um, Edinburgh, people were drunk. You go on late. You know, they say awful things to you. <laughs> you know, they can sometimes be a bit abrupt, can't they? <laughs> yeah, I love Scotland though. I really love it there. Oh. It's, oh, the atmosphere is great for the fringe, yeah. but yeah, some people don't like want to be there. Really, they're just I'd love there. To go. Yeah, I'm going to Edinburgh. I'm there, hoping to go actually in autumn, my husband, because that's one place we want to visit. And also, we got our lovely um, show producer, Anthony, Anthony Maddox, and he lives in Edinburgh as well. So, I've yet to actually meet him in person. So, hopefully, it'll be in autumn. We'll be doing show, won't we? Yeah, we yeah, won't yeah. talk about it, do yeah. we? <laughs> what, uh, what have you got for, say, someone's heckling you? What have you got as put me downs? Have you got any of those? I don't like really doing that. No. Because then it can create like a really horrible atmosphere. Because I've done it before, you know, and and said some horrible things to people, and you, you think, oh no. You, like, yeah. If you read it, you, yeah. you you get the one to one game with this one person throughout the show, and that's They're the point where you can do you. That's where you can do your put me down, isn't it? You've got to get that relationship first with that yeah. one person, and then you can bring in the put me downs. Yeah, but I, I sort of think it's not about that. Like, no. I don't know. I just carry on and ignore them. Yeah, because that, that <laughs> also, uh, you, you know, when you're doing a comedy sketch, you don't necessarily have to go around pulling people apart, do you? you no, know, I don't want Because, to. again, sometimes it can help yeah. people's confidence or self-worth or self-esteem. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, if you're doing it in front of a huge audience, that person could actually feel humiliated. So you do have to be a bit careful as well and to sort of think yeah. about don't you? And, and they can follow you home. Yes. Like, I've had things like, you? you know, you and trolling. Really? I've had awful trolling, yeah. Oh, like, where really? I've sent someone out once. <laughs> sent someone out of a show because they were being so disruptive and then they like, I got trolled like you know really bad and the yeah. police have to be involved so you have yeah, to be yeah. quite careful yeah. you know because you can do really lay into someone you know and and that's not good because you're opening up a can of worms you know yes. but it all depends what type of person they are where I've, I've had people like come up I used to do this like music quiz show with misheard lyrics you know it's a bit Peter Kay he done it first didn't he but it was just like a bit of a filler that all the audience loved and people be disruptive you go, come up here come up here and you bring them up and on the stage because then they're getting their attention that's what that's all they want it's just a bit of attention I wouldn't dream of heckling anybody <laughs> No. I just wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> I just think, no way, because they could just rip me apart. You know, like, they could say something like, that dress is pretty on someone else. You know, like, to be <laughs> really <Yes>. off. <laughs> I'd find that quite funny. He's but, going around um, yeah. it as well, doesn't he, Claire? He, he will get people up on the stage and he hypnotise him. I mean, he's a fascinating yeah. person to watch, isn't he? When, when he does the Devon Brown show. Oh, he's fantastic. He's mysterious, though, isn't he? He is serious. Like, really, like, what is going on there? You like to go on his show and be hypnotised? <laughs> I can't yeah. be hypnotised. Someone you? tried to do it. No. Oh, really? And because um, I, I don't know why. I don't know. Did I've you got quite a strong... hypnotherapist? Because sometimes yeah. it depends on which one you go to. Um, but it's all about relaxing the person and breath work and getting them to count down you know, in order to hypnotise them anyway. I mean, the old-fashioned way, they would literally sort of use the pendulum going backwards and forwards, wouldn't they? And yeah. hypnotise people that way. Um, but nowadays, it's all with the breath work and counting down, you know, from one to a hundred and relaxing the actual client that way. Or the Matt Lucas look into the eyes, don't look around the eyes. eyes. I love that character. <laughs> yeah. Oh, David was I think it was not looking into my eyes, grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. <laughs> I, I, I did like the Peter Kay series. I've often thought about doing a, a, a series like that with Deborah, you know, um, like Car Share. Yeah, that's great. But do the series on the fact that we're on, on our way to do a show or to do a video shoot or something, and we're just having pre show chat in the car. Perhaps something like that. That's we did it. that before, though, when I'm a little mini. Soft yeah, up. you did. Yeah, that was a pre show video, wasn't it? Like three yeah. or four minutes, wasn't it? But that kind of idea, but over a longer journey, you know, have a chat and talk about things before the show. 
you know. I think that could bring up some comedy. Could do. We do have these random yeah. opinions. I must what, do I, what does our audience <laughs> think on Facebook? I don't know what our audience think, but maybe an idea, yeah? Yeah, so getting back to random moments, Claire, I'm sure you've had many random moments in your life, you know, yourself, with obviously the wonderful career path that you've had as well. You know, would you like to sort of say anything about a random moment in particular that was quite sort of funny, that you maybe turned it into a joke or something? I can't think on the top right, of my head. They say that the best medicine is to laugh at ourselves when we've done some... Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah, well, the weird thing was... I'm not taking was... too seriously, like quite often people do, don't <clears> they? <throat> Whereas if you sort of bless your mess and laugh yes. at yourself, you think, silly me, you know, such so like chuckling. Have you ever been in a situation where, you know, even on a film set, for instance, and then you think, why did I say that? And then sort of make a joke out of it. Or not, no. no. I just thought of something just now, like... This flat, when I moved in, I didn't really know anybody. And uh, I like, oh, I love my showers. And the plug had broken in the bath. Oh, no. And it was all kind of, it, I mean, flats. And it was like spurting out the side. Is that a word? Spurt? I don't know. I think I just made it up. <laughs> it's like she's on them in there. Oh, my God. And uh, it was just like spraying out the side. And the, these two blokes knocked on my door. And I'd like... <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes I like I know it's summer at the moment, so we've all got a tan. But um, yeah, like in the winter, I'm like really pale, and I, I like suffer from anemia as well. And I was like, oh, I've got to like do something. I look really awful. I've got to do something, and I had to go and do a gig later. So I bought this fake tan. Right, <laughs> this isn't in my stand up at all. Like, and it was. It was like a, ugh, like a cheap thing. And I just went, just sprayed it on my face. and oh, no. get rid of my dark rings under my eyes. I looked <laughs> so awful. I looked like a goat. I, I looked, I've been ill as well with like a migraine. And uh, they knocked on my door and they were like, excuse me, like <laughs> your, it, your bathroom's flooding. And this, it was a fake tan, not that, that just dries, like a, a sort of dry mist. It had a colour on it, like a dark brown, oh, and no. it looked like I tried to black up. And it was like these blokes must have thought, "What's she doing? <laughs> she looks like she's trying to black up and be racist." And I wasn't. It was just this spray. And I'm like, "Oh!" And my mate went, "You can't do that no more." It's like as if I would anyway, you know. Like, but yeah. And it's just like, oh no. And just now I thought, oh, what colour shall I wear? You know, like you've got the rainbow. Oh, I'll wear white, because like, white's not in the rainbow. And uh, like, because we're like running a bit late, I thought, oh, I've got time to get some Lucasaid, right? <laughs> and it just went, it went everywhere. You wonder what you were drinking. And I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, now I'm going to look like I've wet myself because there was like orange all down. It's like, you can't see the bottom. That's I've got really no bottoms on. <laughs> Is there anything shows up in white when you spill it on it? I've, I've, got, I've yeah. got a challenge for you. I've got a challenge for you. We're, we're, what's the time? Yeah, we're looking closely at three o'clock at the moment. Um, I'm going to leave Deborah with the to finish it off. For you. Can you finish it off with a, an impression of Stacey Solomon you've been doing throughout the last hour or so? You do actually sound like Stacey Solomon. I yeah. do, don't yeah. I? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 my God, that kind of thing. CS6 thing, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, right, OK. You got, to end show. Show. you got to end the show as Stacey Solomon, all right. There's a Go challenge then. for you. I, I oh, think I actually you would be fantastic yeah, stand sure. up with Stacey Solomon. Yeah. The two of you, I think, I would love that. Oh my God. So if Stacey <laughs> Solomon's watching today, yeah. would you like to work on stage with Claire? And you both would be fantastic. A double act. You will be your own French and Saunders, when you? Yeah. Instead yeah. of love Stacey that. and Claire. Give us a call. Give us a call. Yeah. Stacey, us a call. Yeah. And we can have dinner. We can have dinner. Yeah. 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 We can have an interview. Well, you. Can we? She's doing you now, Stacey. She's yeah. doing you now. So if you give us a call. After the show, we can put you in touch, all right? Oh, my God. I don't think she likes being impersonated. I don't think she likes being impersonated, because when I did Britain's Got Talent, I got up there, and I love this joke that I wrote, ravioli, that's a square meal. I think that's well funny. Matt Lucas liked that joke as well. And they cut it out. They cut Stacey yeah. out of Britain's Got Talent. Oh, yeah, no. and I sort of thought, she's quite sensitive as well, isn't she? And I was like, 
because I can be sensitive, even though comedians aren't supposed to be. Actually, but saying that, yeah, you, you're right because sometimes even impersonators have to go through copyright to be able to do that person. So maybe that's what yeah, it was. That, maybe it was a copyright maybe. issue. Maybe it could yeah. be a copyright issue, and that's why it wasn't shown. I must admit, it's because obviously Stacey's a huge celebrity, she's just getting her permission, so maybe that's why. <laughs> yes. So when you, you, you know right, Britain's yeah. Got Talent, which, who were your judges when, you know, you, you got up in front of them? Um, Simon, He's Amanda, a Alicia, and she Alicia's just smiled. Lovely. Her face is amazing. And uh, so funny, David Alicia, Wally is. And she yeah, she's just beautiful. You're not allowed to say that anymore. You're not allowed to say someone's beautiful, apparently. Really? Someone said... Yeah, you're not like because I said Lewis Hamilton was like a really good looking bloke. And yesterday someone said you're not allowed to because apparently Boris Becker said Megan, Princess Megan, was beautiful and then he got told off. Okay. So I can't you're not allowed to say it anymore. You're not allowed to say anything. But I thought again <laughs> it's actually complimenting you know each individual, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. But apparently yeah. yeah. But I'm quite, it's, it's hard in comedy now because you have to be, it has to be clean, like really clean, yeah. you know, like one of my favourite jokes, my mum says it, oh, do you hear about the gynecologist who decorated his flat through the letterbox? And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, like you're not even allowed to say, because it's a bit, you know, yeah. rude, isn't it? Like <laughs> there's so much stuff you can't say and yeah, like we're living in a world where you just got to have really clean jokes, like. Dr. Yes. Boo I avoid him like the plague. I love that joke. But then maybe you can't say that now because of the pandemic. You don't know, do you? It's like Ricky Gervais said, just just do it anyway. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I wonder if they've actually got a list, you know, do's and don'ts, what you're not allowed, you know, what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. Because then at least then yeah. it would give you an idea, all of you comedians. Um, with regards to the boundaries, how far that you can actually go within those boundaries and what you're allowed and what you're not allowed to do. Yeah, uh, so I and think I think it would be good to specify it. So then at least then you would know where you stand, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think French and Saunders did it so well, though. They were so not offensive. I think Harry and Paul, Harry and Field, they were just so good. Yeah, and yeah. we'll never, ever have anything like that ever again. Because yeah. it's Isn't been it done. Nice? Didn't you more yeah. wise as well? They were really good. Yeah. Oh, the proper old school, you know. And yeah. Ronnie Corbett. And He's Dick in the Emory. Emory. <laughs> yeah. all of the old comedians, they were fantastic. When they're just naturally ta talented and naturally funny, you know, and I'm you are a naturally happy. funny person. You, you, I can see it in your beautiful aura. You, you, you've got this persona <laughs> about you, like a ray of sunshine, but you, you just bring a smile to everyone's oh, face. I see gold around you, but I think that's because you. you're also an opera singer. Yeah. And there's something really, really unique about that. Like I used to do Thank a Kathy you. Jenkins impression. Oh, and that's like... amazing. And so <laughs> yeah. Sarah Lightman is, has always been my inspiration. So that's why I studied opera for many years. Oh. I've done all of my grades. But as a child growing up, also Kate Bush. And I can sing like Kate Bush. Yeah. And my singing teacher said to me, you do sound like, you know, Sarah Lightman when you do your opera um, as well, which was a huge compliment because I would love to perform with Sarah one day on, like, on stage. Well, I remember Kate Bush when she was a twig. Yes, well, she, Kate Bush is actually coming to um, <laughs> Kate, Kate Bush is actually coming to um, the Tivoli um, in yeah. September, so I'm going to take my mum to see her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's got That's loads of branches now. She's yeah. branching out. <laughs> well, we need, well, just yeah. put that out there. Put yes, that out. So I have. I've put out there. with her. She's yeah. she's a wonderful woman. She is yeah. phenomenal, isn't she? Um, yeah. So, I mean, she's phenomenal. Less, uh, so it's really exciting but I think personally you've got a bright future and I, I see you with your own TV show in the future so <gasps> going dream. I keep seeing Channel 5 with you as well so I think in the future you'll be working on Channel 5 oh um, I just got a really nice energy then yes you know, know when you're going to work for you I reckon too, too, where, where, Ooh, where I, see love Claire, I see Claire on that channel that I mentioned earlier that I couldn't I wasn't allowed to mention Dave is it Dave it could be Steve, for all I know. I can't remember. <laughs> I was um, on allegedly, last week. Don't it's one, one, though. allegedly, it's a man's <laughs> name. So yeah, that's what I see you. Yeah, yeah. That's really weird because I did something two weeks ago at studio for Dave, did and you? I've been on there. Yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, that's okay. interesting. So you're already going to be on, Dave. Are you after, be watching. After yeah, this show, yeah, after this show, you're going to get pinged. There we go, Dad. Steve. Thank you. Steve, we're going to have Luke say, Dad, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh bless you that's really weird something's just uh popped up on my phone saying britain's got talent i'd love to go. do it again and i got off the stage and they went will you come back and i was like yeah <laughs> they write horrible things about you sometimes though you know yeah. like they said aunt mcpartland was really offended at that impression i did i mean it was an awful impression but i did it just just for the laughs yeah and he was so nice to me everyone oh, was so, so lovely, lovely. And, and deck as yeah. well uh, they well uh, again that was on my wish list actually to meet them and sing simon cow which i did and oh. got through to deliberation day but we didn't make it into semi-finals but at the time we, we was actually um singing a song for the 10th anniversary for britain's got talent so as far as i i i was aware yeah, we were literally just going to sing the song simon cowell is god and next we were actually in the competition. So it was a bit of a shock, you know, to actually be in the competition. But to get into Liberation Day, it was a wonderful experience. I've done the X Factor many times as well. But I fulfilled my wish, you know, now I'm signed to a record label. And Simon did say that he um he liked me, that I was mad, but in a nice way. <laughs> Bless him, which was a huge compliment. And then the funny thing was, literally a couple of years later, he was actually um, a judge. Uh, for one of my friends and he was mentoring him and he mentioned about me and he said you know do you remember Deborah, Deborah Fenella she sung to you Simon Cowell is gone he said yes I remember her and he showed us some him some of my songs and Simon said I like her style so that really boosted my confidence that, you know yeah. that Simon did like my music as well bless him oh so, that's really so, nice it is uh, so fulfilled uh, you know my wish there and David Williams was lovely as well bless him oh yeah he, he, I think he's a bit spiritual, you know, because he was like spiritual. looking into my soul. Yes, I could he's feel very him spiritual. I was like, whoa, I'd like to have a chat with him one day. Yes. You know, wonderful. I, think I like Russell Brand as well. Yeah, I talk he's about Russell spiritual. Brand. Yeah, he's, he's very spiritual. Yeah, I think there's a lot of celebrities that are very spiritual, anyway, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I see myself on national TV, but I'm a bit too old now, so I should have done you this. Never year. know. I should have done this years ago. Britain's Got Talent. We put Tony yeah. on Britain's Got Talent. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I see more... you though, Tony. Um, I don't know if you like sport. I see you doing like talking about sport. I don't know if you're into sport at all. I don't know. No, I'm not into sport, but my my yeah. gift is 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 talking and teaching. Yeah, talking and presenting. That's my gift. Yeah, but I see you presenting something to do with sport. I don't know. It's yeah, and it's on a, on like a big, a massive field. I don't really? know what like Ascot. I don't know something like that. I see I see you doing that. I think you'd fit in really well there oh, as well. I think he'd be good. <laughs> Actually, it's a knockout. You know that, <laughs> yeah, you know that TV yeah, program because it's funny, it was, isn't it? And they're they're like, we're having yeah. a giggle. And I I see with Tony <laughs> sense of humour, he'd be fantastic presenting. It's not. <laughs> we should. You what could you make your own one. Make your own show. Yeah, I mean, yes. that's what we're doing here. That's what we. It's what our close and personal is all about. The Gotham Piano <laughs> Show is about being lighthearted. It's about letting yourself go. It's a like it's all about being you, and that's why we created this show. Is to yeah, bring the best it. out of people, and that's what we. Well, that's what we try and do. And that's what I hope. That's a, that is what we do. We bring the best out of people, and also doing that, bring the best out of us as well. So yeah. we help each other. That's what this show. Is, that's why this show was designed three years ago we started this show and uh, yeah up close and personal is uh, just a subheading of the Gotham Finella show if you know what I mean Gotham Finella show is this is the whole thing and then we've got up close and personal with another show as well after that one that's brilliant it's a lot of hard work a lot of time and dedication isn't it it is we're presenting mm. you know yeah. we used to work on radio together as well and it's, we were doing a radio uh, show for three hours one uh, same day and then doing a two-hour show a two-hour chat show in the evening and that's how our days were going yeah <laughs> it's good fun it's good fun because yeah. we yeah. have some amazing guests and you also one of those amazing guests on the show today. Oh, thank you i'd yeah, love to you. I could chat forever. Oh, but I'd, I'd have to interview you again when you've got a bit more time, Peg. I know you've yeah. got, uh, you Or know, when I'm famous. On in when I'm really famous. One of the other on. shows. One yeah, of, very soon you will be. One, one of the other shows <laughs> that uh, we do, that, uh, that Deb, Deb Invent in, um, designed herself, 
It's called on, In the Hot Seat. Yeah, Claire knows about that one, you know that. That one? Yeah. yeah, that's another show where I can see you. We'd like to see you on that where we can show clips of some of your work as well. So save up yeah, them links, you. save up yeah. them links and get them photographs out, get those video clips out, have it all ready as a package, and we'll see you on the hot seat. Okay. We're I'm in the hot seat. You're in the hot seat. I'm in the hot seat now. Yeah, it's so hot. Yeah, it'll be sizzling. Yeah, we'll really, can't we? It's really hot. We're all in the hot seat at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> and I am oh. after the heaters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bless you. Oh. I better go because I think I can feel that there. Yeah, it's like a casting director for something. Oh, yeah. bless and you. It's to do you with go. women's comedy. So really? I'd well, love to. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see how you get on. Thank you so much, Claire, for today. Oh, thank you. Thank you oh, good luck the I've well. loved it. You are. Thank Nam you. Namaste. 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 Bye. Namaste. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Care. Namaste. Bye. 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 Bye and uh, looking at our show, got off for another show, up close and personal. Uh, I just want to say thank you for joining us this afternoon. I've been Tony Go, And I've been Deborah Fenella. And stay cool with this hot weather, stay cool. And until next week, we'll be back again at the same time at two o'clock on In the Hot Seat with Deborah Fenella, with Chief Commander Celeste Glebe all the way across in Utah in America. So until then. It's a government show. Close and personal.